This video is gonna show you how much it costs to build an unstoppable overlanding Tacoma. This truck came to us from a great guy named David who lives in Washington. He shipped it here brand new and basically had an unlimited budget to build this truck into an unstoppable overlanding machine. So we did just about everything. We're gonna break down the cost of every single thing that he did. And then we're gonna talk about some things that I would do additional on this that he chose not to do, or maybe he's holding off to do it a little bit later. So let's start with the front end. It's really easy to notice if this thing's driving down the road, you're gonna see the lower control arms that are very recognizable if you know what you're looking at. This is the Marlin Crawler RCLT HD kit. It's a plus 275 kit. So basically that means your wheels are going to sit two and three quarter inches wider on each side over stock width. One thing that we always do with these RCLT kits, especially when you're running 37 inch tires, is we do a Land Cruiser 200 steering rack. The LC200 steering rack and Marrack conversion kit, which also comes from Marlin Crawler, costs $928. We pair that up with Brake Hose kit for the RCLT HD. It's only 75 bucks. And then we also throw in RCV Ultimate CV axles. The set on those is $2,200. When you throw in an alignment for $200 and everything including limit straps installed, it's 28 hours of labor, which is $4,200 here on labor. So that section alone on the RCLT kit is gonna cost you $18,674.27 installed. There's some recommended additions on top of that when you're gonna run an RCLT HD kit, and we put those on this truck as well. Those are the Marlin LCA gussets, which are $130. Uh, installation on that's going to run four hours and we threw in the KPO cam tab eliminator kits as well which is $143 setup. The KPO cam tab eliminator kits really cool because it keeps your alignment right where it's supposed to be when you go out wheeling. Now it's not 100% foolproof. You will have to get alignment every once in a while, but I was at the point with my truck where I was getting an alignment every time I went out and wheeled hard. It's just kind of annoying. It costs a lot of money, obviously, if you don't have an alignment rack. And uh, it's a great thing to do if you're gonna wheel your truck at all. It's worth every single penny on the fab work and the kit itself. So for those additions that we just discussed, $920.44 when you get tax in there too. So when you add those in the front end, you're at about $20,000 installed. Let's talk about one of my favorite things in the world, the rear end. One of our favorite things to do on the rear end of a Tacoma is the Archive Ultimate Kit. This comes with a shock relocation kit. It comes with a cross tube that goes between your new hammer hangers. And it's perfect if you wanna run a 12 by two and a half inch shock on the back. So the Archive Ultimate Kit costs $1,700. We also put in Dobinson's rear leaf springs, which is L59112-R. It's a 1,200 pound rated spring. That's $810. We also threw in the Tacoma rear polyurethane leaf spring bush kits with greasable pins. That tax on another $140. You're gonna need these. And uh, to match the front, we went with the Fox Factory Race Series. Again, it's a 2.5 smooth body remote shock with DSC adjusters, and it's a two and a half by 12 shock. Uh, two of those at 850 a piece, 1700 bucks. You of course have to do extended rear brake line, $75 for those. And the installation with fab work there is 12 hours, which comes out to $1,800. The total for the rear end on this with tax is $6,763.90. One of the things that we specialize in here at Mountain Yoda's is doing re-gears. A lot of shops might sell you re-gears, but they outsource that. You don't know if a brand new guy who just did his first training session is doing your gears. It's not something you wanna mess up. It's worth too much money and it can literally destroy a great day out on the trails and become a huge headache if you don't do it right. We'll do it right every time and warranty it too. A re-gear is essential to get more torque. You're gonna have a much better driving experience both on-road and off-road if you get your gears done. This truck comes with 391 stock, but we threw in 529s to accommodate for the big tires and all that extra weight. Set of 529s is gonna cost you $1,478. It is 14 hours to install that, so $2,100 in labor. You throw in $110 worth of gear oil. And then on this truck, of course, we did lockers, okay? So we got an ARB front air locker. That is $1,091. 
ARB twin compressor to mount under the hood to power these air lockers, $616. ARB locker and compressor install, six hours, $900. We also went ahead and did air lockers in the rear. Now, one thing about air lockers over e-lockers is that air lockers engage instantly. So the second you hit the button, you are locked. And what that means is the tires aren't gonna spin independently. So if you're in four low and you engage your locker, you're not gonna have a tire up in the air if you're articulated, just spinning. And the one that's on the ground, not spinning. When you're locked, all of them are gonna spin equally. Now, if you get a TRD off-road or a TRD Pro, this is an off-road behind us here, um, it's already going to have a rear electronic locker and that could take up to a full revolution for it to engage. So the only advantage of going to air is that it's instant and a lot of people like e-lockers or they might claim that they're stronger. The big benefit of e-locker is that it's less expensive and you don't need onboard air to do it and it's uh, less time to install. But David decided to get an air locker in the rear because if you're going to be instant in front, you might as well be instant in the rear too. So you can add another $1,091 for that rear locker. And then you're going to need a manifold installed. This is basically a chamber of air that gets filled up. So it gives you a burst without your compressor having to turn on. And to install the lockers during a re-gear, we charge four hours. Um, we recommend going with an ARB pump up kit so you can use that twin compressor to air up and air down your tires. And then we also did $135 on a Rago compressor slash switch pro mount, which goes really well with this setup. So out the door for the lockers and the re-gear, you're at $8,837.79. Let's talk about the wheels and tires on this rig. They are the coolest on the market right now. These wheels are some of my favorites. They're actually what I'm running too. It is the Alpha Equipment X Commanders. This is a hybrid wheel, so you can run it as a normal wheel with just the base. You can run it as a true bead lock if you just move where the mounting point is, or you could run it like these and put street lock rings on here. What's cool about the street lock rings is that it's gonna offer a lot of protection. So if you go out and wheel this thing and these get bashed up, you can replace them for like 60 bucks. These wheels also have dual valve stems that are recessed, so you don't have to worry about them getting damaged on the trail and causing a big headache. And dual valve stems work really well uh, in certain situations. I've come across a situation where I didn't have a compressor. I was able to borrow one and it was just a cheap one that doesn't have the right kind of link to go into a Morflate quad hose setup. And I just plugged into one of the valve stems and had the Morflate hooked up to the rest of the truck and it self-regulates. Great option for wheels and get you out of sticky situations and offer a lot of sidewall protection for the tires with those rings on there too. Alpha Equipped is making really amazing stuff right now and we're happy to be repping them. I'm glad that he chose those for this truck too. Those wheels are wrapped with some of the best tires on the market. These are the Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws. Now the AT3W doesn't look as aggressive as most 37s, but it is a true all-terrain tire that is three peak rated and is fantastic in the snow. These tires are also 10 ply and they're gonna last 55,000 miles. They have a warranty at 55,000 miles. I guarantee you, you'll never have to use the warranty because they actually last 55,000 miles. I've done it, I've seen many people do it, and we can't recommend these tires enough. These wheels are 387 each when you get the street lock rings with them. The Falcon Wild Peak AT3Ws price fluctuates a little bit, but this is a 37, 1250, 17, and they're 463 a piece when we sold those. And then a mountain balance is going to cost 200 bucks. So with tax and everything out the door for these wheels and tires, you're looking at $4,933.70. We also did a fender trim on this truck. Basically, we just tape it off and we use an air saw to cut the fenders back. It makes it look more aggressive, but it also gives you a lot more clearance. There's some companies like C4 doing fender trim kits that also give you a liner in there too but we've done this several times where we don't really need a kit we can do this by eye we draw it out we've done it a thousand times here we charge five hours to do all four fenders so you're at 750 bucks for that my favorite mod on this whole truck is my favorite mod on my truck and it is a pro charger supercharger a pro charger is a centrifugal supercharger so it's basically a belt driving the cold side of what looks like a turbo but it is a supercharger um, a lot of people get really worked up on what is a turbo versus what is a supercharger. A pro charger is a little bit of a hybrid. It's not the exhaust driving this forced induction. It's a belt driving the cold side of a turbo. So technically it is a centrifugal supercharger. I've had videos before where I said centrifugal. I apologize. It has a G in there and a centrifuge is pronounced centrifuge. If you wanted to make a comment on that and be a hater, that's fine. Just keep engaging with our content and I will keep pronouncing things wrong. Anyways, 
Pro Charger is gonna give you a 45% horsepower gain. It's amazing, this one has straight cut gears so the sound is off the hook. When you're driving this thing, it's a head turner. Some people think there's something wrong with the truck, but the people who know what's going on under the hood are like, yes, please give me that. It takes the Tacoma into a whole new realm. It's no longer a gutless wonder. When you pair it up with a Regear, this is the best mod you could possibly do. The Pro Charger kit comes with absolutely everything you need. We actually do upgrade the belt and we go with a heavy duty belt on here because there's not a lot of room under a Tacoma hood. And we go with a short heavy duty belt because there's a lot of heat going on underneath that hood. So we need it to be a little bit stronger we did have a couple of belts break when we were testing these that hasn't happened since we decided to upgrade the belts we're also working on a few other things and testing uh, temperatures at different conditions like when it's 100 degrees outside and you're running this thing for five hours how's that belt gonna hold up it's the only critical piece to this system that matters the most the biggest thing I think that we're gonna learn from this is that we need to make functional air scoops in the hoods Toyota has these hood scoops that are just there for looks we're going to start making things to make those actual functional hood scoops because we need more airflow when we're pushing forced induction on these trucks. But enough with all that, let's talk price. This Pro Charger setup as it stands, this is not the polished kit. There's a lot of different options you can get, but this is really just a straightforward kit with straight cut gears. You're looking at $7,198 for the kit. It's a 10 hour install, so 1500 bucks. When you throw in tax and everything on top, you're out the door, $9,505.98. Real quick thing here, Rock Lights, these are a six kit setup from KC Highlights. These are the Cyclones. It's obviously being controlled inside there. Three hour install, it actually probably takes longer than that, but we have a hard time justifying charging more than three hours to install six rock lights. But uh, 320 bucks for the rock lights, 450 bucks for the install. It's sweet, especially when it's really dark. I've come across one instance overlanding my truck where I really needed rock lights and I was in the Redwoods and I was doing water crossings. And it was the first time I actually turned on my rock lights and was like, oh, this is extremely helpful. I can see the water and if I didn't have the rock lights, I probably wouldn't have proceeded and ended up waking up on a beach by myself in the middle of nowhere. So it was absolutely worth that cost. Holy shit, man. This truck has like so much yeah. fucking stuff. Yeah. So rock lights out the door, you're at $824.11. Now let's talk about the armor. This thing is C Ford out from nose to tail. We have the C Ford Tacoma Overland front bumper, 1785, free shipping. Powder coating on that's gonna run you 400 bucks. They ship them bare because they can get damaged in freight. Um, the Baja Designs 30 inch S8 light bar inside of that bumper is $859. We have Squadron Sport Auxiliary Light Pods, which are 250 bucks for the pair. The sports are plenty for replacing your factory fogs. So you don't need anything more than that. But I can only say that about Baja Designs. It's worth every penny. Baja Designs is the best it gets. Inside of that bumper, we also have a Super Winch 10S in there. It's a synthetic 10,000 pound winch. It's plenty. Saves you about 200 bucks over a worn winch and they're fantastic. We've been using them and abusing them for a while now. If you have a winch on any bumper, you should get frame support brackets. C4 has frame support brackets. It makes installing reservoirs a little bit more difficult, but there's nuances to all of this stuff. Uh, those brackets are 150 bucks. It basically connects the bumper to the frame in a more solid way that you won't get factory or any other way of doing it really unless you weld it to things. Um, this is the way to go. The rear bumper on this truck is also C4. It's a single swing out bumper. It does have Baja Designs lights in there as well and it just doesn't really get better quality wise than C4 fabrication. This bumper back here including the lights in there with no side hoops is $3,752. Powder coating is going to run you another 400 bucks. Again, they only ship bare bumpers. And then we also have rock sliders on here. Now, I'll be honest, we cut them a deal on the C4 rock sliders. They were on my truck, so they're used 700 bucks for those. And they are not 700 bucks normally. So we just hooked up David because uh, there's a long lead time for C4 sliders. It was something that was overlooked on the build initially, and we threw them on there. They're in great shape. They've been repowder coated, everything's good. There's not even a scratch on them now. Uh, powder coating the sliders is gonna run 250 bucks. We've got C4 skid plates on there too, believe it or not, and those are 1200 bucks. Powder coat there's gonna cost $250. Install for all of that. I'm talking front bumper, rear bumper, all the cuts, the lighting for the auxiliary lights and fogs. 
your sliders and your skid plates is 18 hours, so it comes out to $2,700 in labor, bringing the grand total for the armor to $14,864.79. You may have noticed that this thing has a camper on the back there, and this is from a new company in Colorado called Dirtbox Overland. We have a Tundra at the shop with a Dirtbox flatbed on it, and this is the first canopy camper we've seen from them, and it's pretty cool. It's uh, especially cool because of the price. It's $9,500. I have a Super Pacific that's going to cost you about $14,000, and believe me, it's worth every penny, but if you're going to be a little bit more budget conscious about your camper choice, Dirtbox is a great option here. Um, $9,500, like I said. We also did a two 270 awning from Dirtbox, an awning room at 900 bucks, and then an installation which is $500, same price it costs to install any camper basically. And uh, the grand total there is going to be $13,430.38. How are you gonna control all these lights and stuff and lockers and all that? Well, we did a Switch Pro setup and a Switch Pro is 660 bucks. It basically allows you to put all your electrical in one place under the hood and then you have a panel that controls all of your electrical uh, right next to the steering wheel. So 660 bucks for that. You gotta put it on a mount of some sort. We already discussed the Rago mount and then it's a one and a half hour install for that which is a piece of cake, but that is a slick setup. You can't go wrong with anything from Switch Pro. And then, like I said, this truck was a TRD off-road, which means the grill on the front has changed. This is a Pro Grill, 275 bucks and an hour and a half to do the Pro Grill installation with these Raptor lights on here. Raptor. And then one of the big things to consider here is you've added all this weight, you've added all this power, you've added all this torque you gotta account for stopping. Power brake is absolutely the best choice for brake upgrades. My truck has a big brake kit, but I was able to do that because I don't have a Marlin crawler kit. Now, with the Marlin crawler kit, it makes it really difficult. You do have to cut some metal on the power brakes to get it to fit. We went through that option with David on this build. If you wanted to machine some parts to be able to do a big brake kit, and he opted to go with something new from Power Brake. I'm really glad he did because it's the first time we got to test it out. This is the new Power Brake D-Line kit. Now, this is gonna give you a new front rotor and it's gonna give you new pads. These are really, really quality pads and an extremely good rotor. We're talking leap years ahead of the OEM parts here. You can absolutely feel it. Now, it's not a six piston setup like the Big Brake kit, but it's also not nearly as much of a cost as the big brake kit because this D-line setup's only $810. It's a one hour installation, so you can get a huge brake upgrade for $1,058.93. Now, Power Brake is a South African company. Delon, the owner, is absolutely amazing. He's a great dude. He comes here all the time. He checks in on every one of his dealers. You can call him on a cell phone anytime if there's any issues with anything, but this guy lives and breathes brakes and he has a huge passion for off-roading and Toyota specifically. In fact, they have their big brakes on a Toyota truck that runs Dakar and they win every single year. The stopping power of power brakes is just, I can't say enough about it, just do it. If you build a truck, you need to be able to stop. It's one of those things where once you do it, you're like, how did I drive my truck without this before? completely a no-brainer if you don't want to go all out balls to the wall and do big breaks that you know they cost you about three grand installed go ahead and do this d-line kit you'll be glad you did especially for about a thousand bucks out the door before we end this video i want to make sure we talk about the things that uh, i would do but why don't you go ahead and subscribe if you're this far into the video we're gonna be putting out better and better content as we go i mean we've had this channel like a year and a half and i think we're doing decent but we're gonna keep progressing we got a full-time media guy i'm gonna show him right now Thanks so much for doing that. Now let's talk about what I would add to this truck and also something that uh, I might do a little bit differently too. Uh, there's a lot of considerations, obviously. This total build, you're looking at like $84,000. Um, he doesn't have a roof rack, he hasn't done taillights, he hasn't done headlights. The OEM headlights are terrible, uh, unless you have a pro. Um, I would definitely upgrade these headlights. I would go with Alpha X headlights for sure on this truck and I would do their taillights too. You can go with Morimoto's, they're great too. Um, there's a lot of options for lighting, but I just really like Alpha Rex because I like the people there too and I like how they handle whenever there is an issue. Uh, it makes me really comfortable with recommending them to our customers. 
Um, Sherby Equipment Company roof rack would be a no-brainer on here. They just dropped the Sport Series roof rack, so they're even cheaper than Prinzu's. Um, Sherpa's really known for their high quality racks that can stand up to anything because they're hardcore off-road guys, right? Uh, you can put any rooftop tent on a forerunner, super heavy stuff. It's gonna hold up no matter what. They've put cars on top of their racks and they hold up just fine. But the Sport Series is gonna save you a bunch of money if you're not gonna run like something really heavy on top. This truck doesn't even have room for anything heavy on top. It's basically a light bar holder, but it looks awesome. You could do rock lights within the handles on the Sport Series Sherpa um, and have a little bit more scene lighting for when you're out camping and then obviously put a 40 inch light bar in the front and then it just looks awesome. So I'd definitely do that. One thing I would have considered too on a build of this magnitude and even something that we could add to this with some finagling would be portals. Uh, portals are going to be the next wave in building Toyotas. We have a bunch of werewolf portals in stock right now that we can sell and install to you. A lot of people don't know what portals are yet. They're basically a gearbox that goes on your hub. It gives you a 35% gear reduction and an additional five and a half inches of ground clearance remaining stock. So you can take a stock Tacoma and run 40 inch tires without doing really anything else. That's completely bonkers. Like wrap your head around that. Stock Tacoma running 40 inch tires just from one thing. They're $15,500. It's quite a big install, like 16 hours, and you pretty much have to do a LC200 rack. Um, but I'll tell you what, for the amount of money you spend and the amount of functionality you gain in order to do that, portals are the next level. Another thing I might consider, if I'm gonna spend this amount of money, I might go crazy on the rear end. Um, he saved money with Dirtbox Overland. I think that's awesome. Uh, it's a great option for the money because there is a pass-through, it's a full bed, um, the whole bed moves out of the way too so you can utilize the entire truck bed space. But um, you know, if you're going to spend this kind of money and you have that kind of money to spend on a truck, you might consider going to something a little bit more bougie. Now you could spend that money doing a bed build out with goose gear, Viado equipment, which is what I just got in my truck, or doing like a custom 80-20 build. Um, but yeah, I might have considered kind of upgrading the rear a little bit more, maybe even a flatbed build, but we'll see where this thing goes. It looks totally insane right now. It doesn't get better than pairing up Archive Garage, Marlin Crawler, Falcon, Alpha Equipped, C4, Dirt Box. I mean, this thing is totally hooked up. Pro Charger, 529 Nitros, Air Lockers. Insane. To do all this in one shot too, I cannot wait to see David's reaction. He's actually coming in the morning and uh, let's see what he thinks. Yeah. <laughs> crazy. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Just track straight. It doesn't feel like you're driving on 37s, does no. it? No. Once you actually get moving. Yeah. Especially off the line with uh, 529s. It's, uh, it's kind of hard to explain how it's easy to get in the seat and drive. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't feel like it's hard to stop. Nope. So the D-line power brakes, even though it's not six piston, like they're crazy good. Shift points will be good. Yeah. Uh, because of the tune that's on the supercharger, you're not going to have gear hunting. You're not gonna have to worry about this thing. Yeah, this thing is, man, I'm, like, I'm just blown away by this. I'm happy, dude. It's like a dream come true, honestly. It's crazy. I like, didn't even, it doesn't even feel freaking real. It feels like I'm just gonna wake up at some point. <laughs> you did it, man. Yeah, yeah, this definitely. Is, that's why we do it. I'm just, I'm more glad too that my, so my wife like, just didn't understand the, like what I was doing and then she's like, that looks so cool. I can't believe that. She's so excited about it, so. Now wait till, because that's what it's all about for us is like, hey, like this feels like a dream just seeing the truck. Yeah. What it's really all about is now what you get to go do with it because of it. 100%. That's what I, that's how I sold her on it. I yep. was like, we, look, I got her into backpacking, got her into, and I was like, this is not, now we can do all this other stuff. We can stay out there even longer with this truck. And yep. yeah. And you can get to places that other people can't get to in order to start that adventure. 100%. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, my buddy, my buddy already has a, he's got a Gen 2. And he's got a rooftop tent and all that, and he's just been waiting for me to get my shit together. That way we can go together and do some more stuff that we you know we want to have a buddy system type deal. You just trumped him. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he said that. He, he said I was just trying to one up you him. Left here. <laughs> Wait, no, no, it wasn't. You know, money's there right now, so I might as well. If it's available, then I'm gonna do it. 
Heck yeah, man. Oh, man, this is so cool. It, it, it feels like my, it, it almost feels like, the, I know it's not a diesel, it doesn't have that diesel power, but it almost feels like a little diesel truck, you know, it's kind of cool. It kind of has the sound of it too. Yeah. Like a turbo yeah. diesel. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a lot, a lot, um, I thought it was going to be a lot harder to steer it, because I, when you guys were first telling me about it, I'm like, eh, it can't be as hard as a TJ, with like, with the one that I had, that one, that was a joke, I was, that thing does not handle well at all. It almost feels stuck because of the LC200 deck. But uh, yeah, you guys did a great job. It's amazing. Thank you. And so buddy. it's now it's just gonna. Now I'm gonna spend some more money on it, probably. Yeah, little things to dial over time. It's a yeah. lot to do a build of this magnitude, yeah. going from stock to fully built, like in one shot. So obviously there's you know there's gonna be things to dial in. There's gonna be yeah, you know little nuances to figure out along the way and kind of go from there. Yeah. Um, headlights are gonna be the biggest thing. Like having a build like this and not having like really solid headlights, especially yeah. if you're driving as much as you do, or like even just to drive home, like it's worth it just to get upgrades there for that drive alone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. you, you guys got anything in stock? Um, I think we might actually. If you want to look, yeah, let's we could just do it. Like I said, man, I'm I'm already I'm already I've already gone past the point of no return, so. Yeah. Let's. You get, it'd be like what, like another hour or something to put those in? Yeah, Pat can toss them in really fast. All right, yeah, let's look at those.